Wish Trenders! Welcome back to Wish Trend TV. This is Hazel. So today we are here again with another Do's and Don'ts series. So if you don't know what Do's and Don'ts series are, it's where we actually give out essential skincare tips on the do's and don'ts in a really easy way. So our previous do's and don'ts series, we talked about foods and cosmetics for acne prone skin. So if you haven't watched that yet, and especially if you have acne prone skin, check that out in the description box. So we asked you guys, what kind of skin types should we talk about next for our next series of do's and don'ts? And the mostly requested was oily dehydrated skin type. So here we are with our do's and don't tips for oily dehydrated skin. So especially if you have oily dehydrated skin type, keep tuning in. So guys, what does it mean to have oily dehydrated skin? So in general, you might be oily in the outside, so the surface of your skin may be oily. However, the inner layer of your skin is actually quite dry. In short, you're oily in the outside and dry in the inside. Okay, now let's check if you actually have oily dehydrated skin. So I'm gonna give you a checklist. So check how many you actually can relate to. So did you guys check it? Now, if you checked at least six, you actually have oily dehydrated skin. So what are some causes of oily dehydrated skin? And also, what are some precautions you can take? So as your skin's water and oil balance is interrupted, or it's like unstable, actually this makes your inner skin really dry. So your skin tries to protect this part, so your skin will secrete more oil. But like I said, your inner layer is really dry, so you're gonna feel that tightness, but greasy on the outside. And because of your sebums, your outer layer is actually very thicker, so therefore you tend to build up more dead skin cells. And you really may feel that stickiness and greasiness, so it's kind of hard to manage it. And if you apply a thick moisturizer, you'll notice it won't really absorb within your skin. So in this case, it's really important to manage your, your sebum balance and then give full moisture to your skin. A good point is to use lighter products and layer it so this will actually hydrate your skin more. So finally, let's get into some good stuff. So what are some do's and don'ts for exfoliation? Do, exfoliate dead skin cells. So for do's as a starter, let's exfoliate gently those dead skin cells without irritation. And especially if you have oily dehydrated skin, you have an imbalance of the water and oil balance, therefore you really shouldn't use harsh products because that will actually damage your outer layer skin. For a gentle exfoliator, try to find a product that has AHA. AHA ingredient helps with getting rid of the dead skin cells of the stratum corneum without irritation. If you use it with the compressed cotton pad, you can gently and effectively get rid of dead skin cells as well as excess waste. Don't exfoliating every day. So exfoliating every day or frequently can make your inner skin really dry and actually make the outer layer of your skin thicker. So exfoliating too frequently or every day removes even the dead skin cells that shouldn't be removed. And these dead skin cells actually balance your water and oil balance. In result, your skin outer layer will actually build a thicker layer to protect itself. Therefore, instead of exfoliating every day, about one or two times is recommended. So now let's talk about some do's and don'ts of cleansing. Do use weak acidic cleanser. So as mentioned before, your water and oil balance is imbalanced. So if you use a foam type acidic cleanser, it actually brings your water and oil ratio balance. As a side note, a healthy acidity of our skin's pH level is 5 to 7, which is a weak acidic. So we still have to maintain a slightly acidic condition for a healthy skin. If you're wondering about pH balance, check here. A weak acidic cleanser will protect the inner skin from losing moisture and keep your skin moisturized. The gentle foam will just get rid of the unnecessary waste of your skin. Use a cleanser where you can feel your skin moisturize even after cleansing. Don't using a cleanser that strips away moisture. Now you may think that these cleansers are excellent at exfoliating, but think again, the more it strips away the moisture, 
the more the large amount of palmitic or myristic acid it contains. Especially if you have a product, check the first and beginning list. If it is contained in the beginning of the list, it does mean that it contains a lot of portion of it. And the more of these ingredients, the more likely it's going to cause pore blockage. So this is definitely a don't. Now for some do's and don'ts for toners. Do use deep hydration toner. A deep hydration toner will allow your outer skin and also your inner skin to be deeply hydrated. So the main ingredients for this toner is glycerin, sodium hyaluronate, beta-glucan, propane dial, and penta erythritol. Not only moisturizing, but also is viscous and is absorbed well with the fresh finish. Layer the toner using it around three times to really get that inner layer of your skin moisturized. Especially if you have days where you are feeling extra dry, you can apply a large amount on a cotton pad and use it as a facial pack. Don't don't use products that contain alcohol. Alcohol is easily evaporated and tends to make the skin itch and dry easily. Especially when used frequently, it produces active oxygen and it can weaken the skin's barrier. Even me, every time I use alcohol products, I feel like it really stings my skin. Now some do's and don'ts for serum. Do lower the skin's temperature. So one of the main reasons you have oily dehydrated skin is because of the heat of your face. Did you know that every one degree that the temperature is raised, the amount of sebum level around your face increases by 10%? 10%! Now that's a lot of sebum for just one degree temperature. Therefore the hotter your face, your face is gonna feel more greasy. So therefore, it's really important to lower your skin's temperature. So use a serum that has a cooling effect and actually doesn't grease up your skin. And a light moisturizer that can actually absorb deep into your inner skin can really balance out your water and oil ratio. Don't. Don't use functional serums together. And you know there are foods that shouldn't be eaten together, Cosmetics are the same. There are ingredients you should avoid using together, especially if you have products that have like a wrinkle care function and a poor management care function. Don't combine them. That is the worst. Poor care products have little amounts of oil in it because the purpose is to tighten the pores. But wrinkle care products, they actually contain mostly oil. So think about it. If you combine these two kinds of products, it's not going to be able to effectively perform its full function. But if you really, really, really have to use both of these products together, try using them, for example, the wrinkle care just around your wrinkle areas that you especially need, and pore areas like around your T-zone area where you have a lot of pores. Now some do's and don'ts finally for cream. Do use an oil-free gel type cream. Oil-filled products will give that cooling effect on your skin as well as control your greasiness. Not just give you a fresh finish, but absorb well into the inner layer of your skin. Again, I know that I said this probably a million, trillion, infinity times, but it's really important to control your water and oil balance because this controls your excess sebum and at the same time gives moisture deep within your skin. Gel type texture creams will give a fresh finish outer layer but at the same time, hydrate your inner skin. Don't use products with oil. Just because your skin feels really tight doesn't mean you should use a lot of products that have oil in it. Now, oil may temporarily help the dryness of your skin, but in the long run, it might actually worsen your oily, dehydrated skin. Now, here are some ingredients that contain a lot of oil in it. Triglyceride, sodium palmate, stearate, and stearic acid. And if you have excess sebum, this really causes your pore to block. Remember not to use too much of these oil-type ingredients. 
So that's a wrap up for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope some of the information I gave you kind of helped you out or these were some good tips, especially if you have oily dehydrated skin. Please like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't. And always remember, you are beautiful just as you are. Bye guys!